Welcome back to the Bounce Stadium Rants flagship NBA program. I am Kevin. With me, as always, is James. James, how are you? I am great, Kev. Another week. How are you doing, my friend? I am good. I have recovered. Luckily, the good folks of Nashville did not know I was there. I got out <laughs> unscathed because... Uh, snuck in, snuck out. Yeah. I... I brought my Pacers hat instead of my Colts hat. We'll just say that. Yeah, I would. That was probably a good move for you. Um, very good move for you. Even Nashville's a little down on Sunday. James Schmidt's land was a little down on Sunday. Tough. We took a tough one Sunday. It It's not been good for us in, in the old gridiron gang. No. Any, any of us bounce no. hosts here. Mm-hmm. So luckily our teams are, it was a bad weekend overall for us. Wasn't it? You guys had to, Something happened on Saturday, and Tennessee blew it on Sunday. <laughs> Historically bad. Yeah, that Colts helmet, it's in great Ooh, shape. Luckily, yeah. didn't Store get that broken. one for next year. Put it away. But we are here to drown our sorrows in the mm-hmm. hardwood. Yep. And Back to where we belong. Yeah, exactly. This is more – this is my natural environment. And, yes. and speaking of that, now, when we look at my personal skill set, James – it looks more like this. It revolves more around the oh, yeah. the you, horse oh, aspect. Good little half split there. Bank Ooh. shot. Use the glass. No travel. Very impressive. Very impressive. With a move like that, I can understand why it took created the space. Created space. <laughs> Two Pushed years. Get him out of the way. <laughs> to trade this guy, it was very good. I mean, that's a tough one. Uh, as the we we have the audio removed, but the play by play guys, when they saw that play, they immediately suggested that. Uh, THT and Conley go one on one in a game of horse at halftime. Yes, so, I agree. And I'm all I'm here. I'm I'm for it 100. Mm-hmm. Well, we have some other clips now. Some of these might make your horse highlight reel, but other ones, quite frankly, James, are just going to leave you puzzled. Oh, oh, tough. Russell shots. Westbrook, who according to Lakers propaganda is no longer on the trading block because he's averaging 15 points off the yes. bench. James, after this highlight reel, I have to ask you a very serious question, and that is, do you believe any of that talk is Russell's new role on the bench, which we have chronicled over time? Does that make him untradeable? Are the Lakers no longer interested in getting rid of that, what was it, $47 million? $47 million, I think, for you. And absolutely not, Kev. <laughs> like, if they can get out of it, they're getting out of it. That that is that right there is the Russell Westbrook experience in a nutshell. It's just <laughs> roller coasters, valleys, peaks. They're like, whoo! It should be pointed out. Backboard. One minute. All of those clips took place yeah. in approximately one minute of game time. I didn't set that up properly, but that ad just adds to the to the legend. Gets the block, gets hit out, blows by him for a layup. That's a goaltending off the back of the side, like. Almost no, loses the handle, not. turns Almost it into lose, yeah. a take, but then gets blocked. Uh, three years ago, that would have been a dunk. That's the yes, thing. We talked about that with that's Russ That's what he's missing is the, soup, is the athleticism, the extreme athleticism he had. He just doesn't have it no more. And he's yet to learn how to play without it. And that, mm-hmm. and when he does that, if he does that, we've seen it before, Rajon Rondo, I don't know if it's a fair comparison. I go to it a lot because of – the types of games that they played Rondo, I think has always been more of a facilitator, but they were always Mm -hmm. athletes that had kind of broken jumpers, but Rondo became someone not right away, mind you. And that's the other part that I think is important here that, you know, Westbrook, there's still hope because uh, it didn't go well with Rondo. The first couple of times he had to be that veteran Mm -hmm. presence on a young team, Mm -hmm. come off the bench. He had to fail at that, get, get benched, get traded a couple times. And even then, it still doesn't always work. But it's possible for Russ to be just the ultimate backup point guard. For it someone. is. It's just – I. it makes him untradeable. No. If they can get out of it, they're getting out of it, man. They're going to Absolutely. Get out of it. They the Pacers are sitting there thinking, hey, man, mm-hmm. it's still, gonna, still two first. My, yeah, that's all. One for Miles, one to weird, take Russ. Yeah, how do you? I don't. They're in a bad spot, man. Like 
those are the only picks they have. It's the only commodities they have. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be them. Some have argued that they should blow it up, and they may not have made our candidates for should they not make up. ours. But we will be talking about teams that maybe might want to consider blowing it up mm-hmm. later on in the program. But before we do all of that, we need to look at some more of what happened in the week prior. Now, yep. I'm always very saddened by the timing of this efficiency landscape, James. But we're going to look over it regardless because it's so beautiful and it tells it's, you so much about your sport. It's so good. It just love. comes out every Friday. It comes out the day after we talk. It's so good. You got the Grizzlies top offense and defense. The Cavs, I'm stunned the Cavs offense is that bad. Defensively, Jared Allen and all those bigs really helped them. I'm very surprised our offense is that bad. Equally shocked at that. Yes, the defense, uh, everything you said is, is exactly how I feel. I'm not surprised to see. We've talked about it before. They have that great ability to just rotate in good defenders in the front court, mm-hmm. and that makes them just a, a constant defensive threat. And they have good uh, guard play uh, on the perimeter as well. But I, I have heard it now. Now, Cavs fans aren't surprised by this. They will tell you that. They are kind of frustrated mm-hmm. with the offense right now. But there's a lot of talent there. It. I wonder, James, with the Cavs, if it isn't too much of – uh, too much ball handling. What they have in when I think about the Cavs' best offensive players, I'm thinking about, of course, Donovan Mitchell, Darius mm-hmm. Garland. I'm gonna throw Karis Levert's name out there because yep. he is a talented scorer. But also, yep. he is the same ball dominant, dribbling, create his mm-hmm. own shot off the dribble. Yep. There aren't a lot of guys in Cleveland that are coming mm-hmm. off the screens that are making you run for 18 seconds until you're tired and then you're catching, then they're Mm -hmm. catching it and they're draining it. It, it, It's a lot of inefficient type of play. And when you think of it that way, it's a lot of ball dominant play. Uh, So maybe when they gel a little bit more, what do you, what do you think? Do you think there's hope for that efficiency number to go up? on I I, I think you're right. Cause then you also talk about Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell both missed time early in the season. So they've missed games, important games of play together. I mean, I guess it can't get worse, can it? <laughs> I mean, there's that. It's got to get better. Like it's, it's yeah, <laughs> it, it's not the worst, but it's close. It's um, up there. It's uh, it's it's near Wemby Land, which is uh, yeah. The problem is foreshadowing bit. Yeah, but the problem is they're really good. And what are they now? They're they're third. They're twenty one and eleven. So even though their offense is crap, their defense is not. Uh, it's got to get better. I, I don't. I don't think they're going to be world beaters, but it's definitely. I don't expect it to stay that bad all season. I will say this for Cavs fans to give you some hope. If I had to choose going into a playoff series, I would rather be a better defensive team than an mm-hmm. offensive team, especially considering the uh, one-on-one athletes we just mentioned that have the ability to create their yeah. own shots, and the fact mm-hmm. that you do have guys in the paint that can grab some rebounds. You have guys that can get tough baskets on this team. So, uh, again, I would be feeling okay about where I'm at if I'm Cleveland. You definitely want to see that offense become more efficient. These guys need to get used to playing with each other. Keep the defense where it's at, and you're going to be okay going yeah. to the playoffs, mm-hmm. in my opinion. We look at a team we're going to talk about a little bit more here. We've got the Knicks. Look at that. Yeah. They are they, Plus, they're number two in net, top ten on both offense and defense. You also would have not Brock. have guessed that. Would no, not have guessed that. absolutely would not have. It's been a real team effort over there in New York. Who it's, else stands out for you? Oh, go ahead. I'm surprised Golden State's as good on both sides of the ball as they are, considering their record. Like that, of all of that group that's in the top right quadrant, they're the team. Them and I guess the Knicks aren't great either, but they're the sore thumb. They're the one. They're four or five games under 500 right now and just got trounced by the Knicks, which we will talk about, but yes, got that, that was not pretty. And yeah, it's, they are an enigma and we, we talked about the health of some of these other teams. So we have to talk about it with golden state that they have been a real patchwork. Yeah. They're two so games far. under 500. I was wrong. Or not, I said four or five. Let's correct that two games, but still not quite as bad, yeah. but yes. Yeah. yeah it's, 
it still has been difficult, but I, I honestly, that's all I'm going to equate it to right now with Golden State is health. I, I cannot forget the Draymond Jordan Poole issue, but uh, we can't deny the fact that these guys yeah. haven't had a lot of time with everyone healthy. No. So, I also just noticed the Wemby land fixture down the bottom left. I hadn't seen that before. Yes. <laughs> Which will be great because we will be taking a trip down to Wemby land. And before we do, let us know in the comments below who you think ought to maybe blow it up and take their own trip down to Wemby land. Because we've got some teams right in this central quadrant mm -hmm. today that we think might need to call it quits and, and change course because... As we've talked about, this is a generational talent, and there, there are some other quality players up in the lottery. So we here at The Bounce, we love to hear from you. We want to answer your questions. So let us know at the comment below whether it's what team you think uh, is most efficient that you think is going to move up. But more importantly, right now, we want to know who is in dire need of some Victor Wembanyama in their life. But... Any other, before I move off of the efficiency landscape, James, do you have any other teams in here that you want to talk about? We've got some guys. There's some teams on there we're going to talk about. <clears throat> in the yikes side that uh, maybe should have listened to us earlier in the year. I'm mm -hmm. looking at you, my beloved Indiana Pacers. Yeah. You Oof. just would have lost when I told you you should have been are, losing. The Wolves are down there. Eesh. Wolves are going to get it right. I'm telling you. The Wolves are going to get it right. Fingers crossed, bud. <laughs> they're, they're, what's going to have to – Carl Anthony Towns has to commit to being a corner stretch four when when he comes back. He's going to have yeah. to do it for one mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, it's going to do it. They want it to work. It's He's going to do it. It is. And uh, I've got some beachfront property that I would like to sell you <laughs> as well. But before I do that, we need to touch on – a storyline from last week so i griped and complained and mm -hmm. i apparently was not completely wrong here because the nba fined the former new jersey now yep. brooklyn nets twenty five thousand big ones after sitting eight players from against the pacers now it's not mentioned in this headline i think it should be it wasn't just eight players we talked about it it was mm -hmm. their their wasn't top just eight yes it was their wasn't top just eight. eight random guys there was very specific eight and brooklyn was not alone in their shenanigans I didn't, I didn't know this one this is the one i saw and sent to you i had no idea the heat got in trouble kev what they did the next day I don't know. They might. They probably should have been fine for what they did the next day. It's an elite <laughs> troll job. Every single player on their roster they put on the injury report. Mm. Every single one. All four, 13, 14, however many it was, every single one was on the injury report the next day. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's like Pat Riley met Bill Belichick for a drink at a hotel bar. And he said, yep. you, know, you know what we like to do, Pat? Really funny. It'd be really funny. <laughs> we just put everybody as questionable. Like, like, you, won't do that. You, you, won't, you won't do that. You won't do that. And you guys can do that? that? Oh, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it. Yeah, I, it's. Was it a troll at the NBA or was it a troll at Brooklyn for just sitting a bunch of people ooh. and then after the fact trying to Getting them and... uh, explain it? Because afterwards, Brooklyn had mm. it, an explanation for all eight and yep. isolated in a vacuum. All eight could be reasonable, but when, when you parlay That's them together question. like that. <laughs> I don't I, I I think it's probably both. I, I like the idea of it being the NBA, but it very well could be both of them. It's kind of like uh, uh, poking the NBA while also saying, hey, Brooklyn, you dummies. Like this is yeah. how yeah. exactly instead of explaining it afterwards, just just put them on your injury report. Yeah, just put them on there. <laughs> if all 14 of them are on there, you're good. I do. I, I will say as a fantasy uh -huh. manager in both football and basketball, I selfishly love the NBA finding teams for doing this because there is Helps nothing more frustrating than trying to navigate these waiver wires mm -hmm. when you're not being honest with me about who's going to play. It's the most frustrating thing. I can't stand the teams who 
Uh, now, more in the NFL, this happens. They want you to think a guy's going to play, so they'll make him questionable. And now my whole roster is jacked up because I have to take that guy out of IR. We all mm-hmm. know he's not going to play. But now, before I can make any free agent moves, I have to move him into my active roster. So NFL, NBA, stop it. All right, stop it. Not trying to cheat us. Just tell us. Just, you just make enough up. money off of us, guys. Just stop. All right. A little fair play never hurt anybody. Well, <sighs> maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Probably, probably some people would argue with that. But you know who's who's really really upset about the unfairness of life. It has to be Lakers fans, and maybe even Anthony Man. Davis. Man. I, he was playing at an MVP caliber level. We talked about it last week, and this has been the knock on him since the bubble is he has not been healthy at all. And he's now out for at least a month. This probably torpedoes the Lakers, right? Like there's no way they can survive this. I don't see it. I mean, they were finally getting things back together, and that was yeah. with – it was requiring Davis and LeBron to we were combine. We're talking about the seventy the points amount, tonight. Yeah, the amount of minutes they were playing too. We were just talking about it, and the fact that they're contributing for sixty percent of the team's point total, like yeah, that. I, so let's thir- just say, boom, that's thirty percent gone for a month. Where do you get that from? Lonnie Walker is not. Russ baby. making that up. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, and that was interesting. We talked about no, that a couple just... weeks ago. Anthony and LeBron were both out, and Russ still came off the bench, which I, yep. to me, defeated the whole purpose. The one silver lining I tried to convince myself of as we were all screaming, yep. Why didn't you trade for Buddy Healed? But anyway, uh, I was thinking, Oh, well, whenever Ant Man and LeBron are hurt, Russ can will this team to victory against the yep. likes of mm-hmm. Oklahoma City. Not going to happen. I was wrong. What it's, what can they do? Is there any what what nothing. can be done? I don't think there's anything. I mean, you're gonna have to you're gonna expect LeBron to take on an exponentially large load at that age. Like he's already playing. A, he's he's scoring and playing so many minutes as it is right now, and he's got to take another step. And they got blown out by Phoenix in their last game by 26. Like, ugh, I. I We've talked about it before. They don't have the right supporting cast for a LeBron. No, uh-uh. They don't, man. And they actively hurt themselves. Now, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I will admit I don't know all of the details that went around their original releasing of Matt Ryan, but mm-hmm. him being a guy that had some size and could hit, hit shots from the outside and at the very least showed his ability to hit a clutch three-pointer – uh, you know, mm-hmm. I don't. I, I don't understand why the Lakers are out here cutting the few guys they have that can hit three. Can points. shoot the ball, yeah. And and, I and know, now man. they need them. They they need some. They need somebody. I I don't know who they can go out and sign to add any depth to this roster. Know. We've talked about their inability to make trades. Yeah. If you're not willing to part with those draft picks, which I wouldn't be, I don't know. If I don't think there is a fix, is the problem. They're going to see their lottery draft pick go off to the pelicans i'm ready to go to the other direction if if i'm the lakers i'm blow it up answer yeah answer me this james and and i'm sorry we did not intend to have a should the lakers blow it up conversation no we did this was not this is not on the menu we'll talk about other teams that we think should but i i just i want to ask you this question if you're rob palenka at are you considering pulling LeBron James aside for a conversation of like, Hey, where else would you like to go? Because that's the last asset you have. I think you have to consider it. I get that. He brought you a title. He's a cornerstone. He wanted to be there. However, the way they have built this roster is going to waste his last years. And he's still going to bring back a mega hall. He'll still bring back picks, players, everything you need to restart it. I I think you have to consider it. I think the reality is they're not going to win the title with that team. There's no extra help on the way. There's no shooters that aren't playing right now that are hurt. I think you have to exhaust all options because it's not just about LeBron. It's about the franchise, and it's just going in the wrong direction, and it's not going to get better. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with you, and I think the Lakers are a franchise that don't need to look that far into their own history to see what happens. We all love Kobe. Uh, mm -hmm. Their decision to continue to pay him into his twilight and not be able to build around him mm -hmm. created the lengthy rebuild that they had before LeBron came in. And then that rebuild had worked. We talked about that before too. That rebuild worked and then they shipped mm -hmm. it all the way for that one title. Yep. And if AD and LeBron had stayed healthy and, and they had two titles, I mean, some might argue it was still worth it because NBA yeah, championships are hard to that. come by. Ask Pacer fans. It, it, we'd, we'd trade our whole roster for one probably, uh, you know, so, but I, it, it's tough. Uh, they can't get any of those prospects back. But at what wow. point do you say, hey, we've got to start looking at the future because there's no way to turn this into a champion. So what I think are we you doing? Have to, like, you have to start considering it, man. If you could get Russ out of LeBron, there's plenty. There's Every team in the league still taking that dude. They're still going to take him. What can you get back and you get draft picks back? And you? the problem is they're not going to be premium picks. There's a still – it's just a – it's a nightmare scenario, and they did. They built it themselves. They did this like it's nobody else. They didn't. They traded for Westbrook. Nobody else did. The next call they need to make is to Magic Johnson, and you know why? I'm going to tell you why, James. Because someone, some very charismatic individual, perhaps a world champion, perhaps a great point guard, someone needs to get in Russell Westbrook's ear and convince him that accepting a buyout from whatever team he gets traded to is not mm -hmm. the end of the world. And that in fact, right. if he does it right, he can make that money back in uh, some of it immediately when he signs with a contender that is willing to play him 17 minutes a game in the playoffs. And then when he does well for that team that he can then go and mm -hmm. extend his career and get a mid-level two-year deal, and he's going to make that money back in the long run. But, yes, that's a big key to this here because Russell has been pretty adamant he's not going to accept a buyout. And in order for this to work, I think the Lakers are going to have yep. to be able to trade him to a team that says, hey, we really don't want you here. We want the picks. We'll buy you out and then go play for someone. Because yep. there's plenty of teams that could use a Russell who – is willing to accept his role off the bench. There's going to be some mm -hmm. growing pains there, but there are a lot worse backup point guards in the in the league right now. That he he, he can yep. be an upgrade somewhere. So yeah, there's lot, somewhere he can fit. A lot of conversations need to be had, but I think this is time. It's it's bad timing because there's another universe where Anthony Davis is on his way to an MVP. Yeah, uh, health. It sucks. It just it's. It's the name of the game for him. He just can't stay healthy right now, man. He was he's playing so good too. If it weren't for Kawhi Leonard, I would say Anthony Davis is our modern day Grand Hill, but um we are yes, yeah. mm -hmm. it's unfortunate. What might have been what still hopefully could be, but we'll go quickly from bad news on the injury front to some good news because James, I gotta be honest. I forgot how deep this Bucks team is because they had not one, mm -hmm. but two injured snipers waiting yep. in the wings, and they're both. You bad. didn't realize he was even on their team. That's what's that's what's funny. We were talking pre-show about this. You didn't realize he played for them. I forgot about that. Yeah, because it was uh, it was kind of like a Ricky Rubio. You know, he gets traded after he tears his ACL or whatever was it a meniscus. Yep. Um, yeah, so it was a torn ACL. And and so yeah, he he's gone. You forget about him, and then it's like, oh yeah, the Bucks have even more depth on the outside. Yep. Mm -hmm. I am uh burying the lead a little bit here. You can see my excitement, it's palpable. Uh James, what do you think about Ingles being added to the fold in Milwaukee? Are they now the number one team out in the East? Well, their record says they are, Kev. I guess it technically, are. yeah, that's true. They are, they are number one right now. I, man, I think so. Like he's gonna take some time to get back in that lineup. Middleton's still gotta get healthy, but the Celtics have faltered here as of late. I, they they were on a torrid run in the last five. They've struggled. I think it's Boston now. I think it's shifted a little bit to them. And then you got a guy like him, a sharpshooter like that. Gives them a different dimension. Adds another shooter. I, I like the Bucks right now out of the West or out of the East. Yeah, I I, I do too. I know Ingles hasn't 
had a chance to do much yet. It's only been 15 minutes. We're still yeah, going to see mm -hmm. more from Middleton as well. But it's it's not even Christmas yet. These guys have Plenty so time. much time. And, oh, I just – we talked just a minute ago about what LeBron needs around him, and I am just salivating at thinking about what Giannis will be able to do mm -hmm. and the double teams and all the attention he's going to draw. Yep. And then he's going to have – Ingles and Middleton and mm -hmm. heck even Brooke Lopez out there to just uh, yep. make people pay for com it's, committing to that's far. a lot, man. It's a lot of dudes, a lot of players. Oh, Celtics Bucks is gonna be it's it's a it's a shame sometimes uh that the playoffs are broken down by conference because every once in a while you think the two best teams won't get a chance to play for it at the end. And right yep. now it really looks like that Boston Milwaukee series is going to be for all the marbles. But before yep. we dive out of the week in the NBA, we want to again ask you folks watching to leave us a comment. Let us know who you're excited about, who you think the best team in the NBA is right now. Is is it one of those West Conference teams? Maybe the Pelicans? I would love to have that debate with you. One team. That has something to say, especially after the way we treated them last week. Know, we James them bad, man. would be the uh, Phoenix Suns, who mm -hmm. as soon as I tweeted out yep. that the Pelicans were officially the best team in the West, I believe they had a 57 or a 54 to 37 point lead at that time. Yeah. The Suns said, they walloped them. hold my beer. And uh, yeah, yeah, they took them out to the woodshed and have what won three straight since? What's three the news straight. Here? They are three straight. They beat the Clippers, Pelicans, Lakers, so two playoff teams, then the Lake Show. They are currently winning right now, playing the Wizards right now. They are up eight with six minutes left in that game. And Devin Booker went nuclear after his struggles. He had 58 points, 12 of 35 from the field, 6 of 12 from three, six rebounds, five assists. He was not pleased with us in our comments, and he let us know. Curse, he, he let us know the curse of the bounce is not it's not happening this week not this time and it should be noted that before we went live which was about 30 minutes ago as of recording the wizards were up double digits so mm -hmm. the Suns have again decided oh hang on no the, they're team, playing without uh d book as a plan tonight wow so they're just turning it up yeah. even without booker with Very DeAndre Iton's got 28 and 12 Landry Shamet off the bench, 20, 22 on 7 of 16, 6 of 11 from 3. Chris Paul, 11 and 8. Yeah, so it's kind of some guys you don't expect. Now, I do guys. believe Bradley Beal is back for Washington tonight as well, right? Yes, he, so. he was having a bad – oh, he's up to 15 points. He's got 15 on 17 shots. I knew he was struggling at half. At half I think he only had two. Oof, Kuzma, Kyle Kuzma with 23. Hey, <laughs> there's some shooting the Lakers could use. <laughs> it's too bad he was on, he wasn't on their team before, right? Oh my God! Oh, I daydream about Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Man, Brand, were, uh, they, Jordan they, Clarkson. Could have been something. God, I always forget Jordan. Clarkson. Julius Randall. Yeah. Oh, that. There's a, again, you know, I'm I'm big into the uh, multiple worlds or the multiverse, and there's a universe right now where that young Lakers squad is a dynasty. Yes. They are winning championships. Yep, just nasty how good that team could have been, but it's okay. It's just, it's just they're gone now. Goodbye. You know, yeah. There are a couple of teams in the East Coast that are pretty nasty right now. A couple of New York squads that are yeah, hot, James. You've got Brooklyn and New York tearing it up right now. Nets have won six straight, up to fourth in the East, four straight on the road. Got some fun Durant. So Durant and Kyrie seem to have figured it out together. Durant scored 29 or more points in nine of his last 11, including six 30-point games. And then Kyrie has scored 32-plus in four of his last five. And then you saw the game-winning three. He hit over Fred Van Vliet's head the other day against the Raptors. So – Kev, the Nets are scorching. What are your thoughts there? This is what we've been waiting for. 
Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I thought. For years, this is what James Harden signed up for. Could mm-hmm. you imagine while I am just yeah. living in worlds that might have been? That's yeah. that's apparently the theme of this episode for me. Could you only imagine mm-hmm. if they were able to figure this out when they still had the beard before they were saddled with the ghost of Ben Simmons? Yeah, he's doing nothing for him. Ugh, man. Mm-hmm. Nine and one in their last 10, 19 and 12 overall. My question for you, James, is is it enough? Because if they had thought it would be enough, I question whether they had gone after James Harden in the first place. Because much like with LeBron, you can't help but think about Karis LeVert, Jarrett mm. Allen. Maybe at the time, wasn't Spencer Dinwiddie still there? At the yes, time? Dinwiddie was still there, yeah. Theirs doesn't look as bad. Those guys are good, but it's not the Laker giveaway, in my opinion. Like I think No, that- but... I'd rather have all of that than Ben Simmons. Yeah, hundred percent. With, with all of that, I would be saying right now, I would be amending my previous statement about Milwaukee and Boston clearly being the best. So I guess kind of yeah. that's the question where that I'm was. At. If you had pieces of those guys added in with them, did we the shooters like Karis LeVert? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying there. That one's tough. Is it enough? The question is, what is enough? They're currently fourth. And I could see them holding that spot being a top four team. Maybe they can pass Cleveland to be top three. They've got such high end talent. You know, Durant and Kyrie are top ten players easily. You know, there's Durant's probably top five, but it's enough to keep them top four is and then what's considered enough, you know, like absolutely second round team, and then you go from there, you know. That's fair. And it's always worth considering with Brooklyn at least the recent Brooklyn Nets have always yes. been a a factor in the buyout market. Yes. Uh, it's it's uh, as a as a professional NBA writer for the last two years now, I can assure you that almost every buyout candidate is rumored to be signed by either the Lakers or the Brooklyn mm-hmm. Nets at some point over the last two years. So there's still some depth to be had potentially there. They they may not be done. Yep. We have. We, we've talked about guys coming back from injury, some snipers, especially, you know, Joe Harris back in the mix there in Brooklyn. They have, I still to this day, again, lesser than to the level of what the Lakers did. But, man, I Brooklyn, I think if they could redo the decision between uh, Bruce Brown and Patty Mills, yep. I, mm-hmm. I think they'd have done that one differently. But, you know, they but they, they have those shooters. They have Patty, they have Seth, they have Harris, you know. Uh, but I wonder, this is the same team. You remember, it wasn't that long ago that Kevin Durant was calling out his teammates by name, almost in yep. the Rick Pitino way of saying, Larry Bird ain't walking through that door. You know, yep. Kevin, Kevin McHale ain't walking through that door. He did hit us with that not so long ago. So he did. I tend to think this is the same team that won't be able to get past Milwaukee or Boston yep. without more help. I don't know where that help's coming from, but it is sure nice to see them finally, I mean, yep. win some games. I think this is a team that could beat Philly. Like you said, this is a second-round playoff team. As soon as they run into one of those top two seeds, though, mm-hmm. good luck. Not enough it's, as of now. That's exactly how I feel. Then the other Eastern team we're talking about that's scorching is the Knicks. They won tonight. They beat the Warriors. They beat the Bricks off of tonight. They won by 38. They have now won eight straight. Had them at sixth here. Let's get an update here, see if they're in the same spot. Yep, they are sixth in the East right now. Some good wins. Cavs, Kings, Pacers beat the Bulls twice. And then just more stats with you guys. Julius Randle scored 25 or more in five of his last six. Jalen Brunson has scored 30 and two of his last three. This one's fun. The stats fun, Kev. He's shooting 51.5% from three in December. Wow. It's a heck of a number. I was actually blew, blown away when I saw that number. Wow. And then our, then RJ Barrett is averaging over 20 in his last five. So Kev, there's another, are the Knicks contenders or pretenders? I think they are currently pretenders, but I do want to say I am very happy. And I hope that, this R.J. Barrett slander stops once and for mm-hmm. all because most of the time it, 
the call is coming from inside the house, by the way, Knicks fans. It's you guys who need to Correct. relax and stop not slandering R.J. Barrett, okay? <laughs> Give this kid some time. He's going to be great. He's and They want him to be the right savior now. right away. and He's fine. Like, he's he's fine. plenty good. He's plenty good. Give him some time. Not a lot of teams would take him. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, or or yeah, just move on from him. Yeah, plenty of teams would be yeah. would be happy to have his services. The, but mm, contender, though, I I don't think I I think I agree with you. I don't think so. I I have a hard time saying anything differently about the Knicks in in as it relates to their uh, playoff potential than I just said about Brooklyn. Uh, it, different. The mm -hmm. parts are all different, but I think yep. the end result is the same. They could beat any team in those first two rounds. I think they could beat any team in the East in a best of seven. And the question is, can they beat Milwaukee? Can they beat Boston? The answer is, from no. both of us, is a hard no. Just not. No. They're not good enough. So to spin it mm -hmm. a different way, let's say that it's a battle of New York in the first or second round Ooh, of the East. Okay, New York who, and Brooklyn. Okay. Who do you think is – who? who's the better playoff team right now? I think you got to lean towards Durant Kyrie. I think those two are better than Julius and Jalen Brunson, right? That's like yes. R.J. Barrett's the best third man of both teams. I, I think the high-end talent is where you, you run with it and you hope for the best. Yeah, it's a deep versus wide situation, right? I think top to bottom – the Knicks if the playoffs started today, they would play. So let's let's put. I didn't even notice this. <laughs> if the playoffs started today, Brooklyn or no, they would. Dang it, Brooklyn's the four, Knicks are the five, the six. So if Brooklyn gets the three, and the Knicks they either one game off. I, I read that. Yes, they don't four versus five. They'd be three versus six. They're that close mm. to playing. That'd be a fun hypothetical. So sorry to get your hopes up there. I screwed that one up. <laughs> that's all right. It would be fun though. But that. That's my thought. I, I think right now the Knicks have a deeper roster, but like you said, the Nets, if it's a best of seven and I have Durant and Kyrie to lead me, yes, mm -hmm. Knicks fans should be able to count on some very big games from Jalen Brunson. Yep. Uh, we've seen that. But it's two against one in that regard, and I, I do think Randall would have some big playoff games. But, yeah, as of right now, and and I have been more confident about other decisions in my life, but as of right now, I would take Brooklyn in that series. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we both agree there. They are the two hottest teams in the league. They got the two longest winning streaks right now, eight and six. So it's yeah, and that impressive that turnarounds number, for both of them. That number that the Knicks put on Golden State—they quite the impressive. What was it? Almost a thirty-point victory. What I think was it that? was thirty-eight? Let me pull up the scores from tonight. Let's see here. It 120 was they, they won 90 132 to 94, so 38 points shellacking. Absolutely, they, out, they outscored the Warriors 19 in the four, 32 to 13. They in a game that was already well in hand, they st which is yeah, they were hard to do, mm -hmm. hard to do in sports. Most of the time, you tend to let off the gas or you tend to just put the bench in, mm -hmm. but that. Leads us to another question. So obviously, you have to give credit. No one in no one in this show is going to try to take credit away from the Knicks right now, as they're on their way to maybe no. a ten game winning streak. However, is it time to worry about the Warriors? Now we've asked this question before, but mm -hmm. Steph Curry was playing before, was playing an MVP level, like it was. You know, he could. He thought they could save him. He is now gone. And the, the 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 wheels have come off, Kev. The wheels yeah. have come off the tracks. I it's... I don't I don't know. I, the The Warriors for me are a lot like Tom Brady in a sense that I have such a hard time writing them off because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't have the Warriors as my preseason NBA champion last year, but mm -hmm. you know, not many so, people did. They were coming off a couple injury plagued years. Steph, missed they had games. Clay had missed back to back seasons. Like, I, nope, I don't think anybody did. They were booted in the play in the year yeah. prior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every time I'm ready to say, okay, it's time to turn the page yes. on this Warriors dynasty, I'm reminded of how foolish I am. So, mm -hmm. 
what is it about this iteration about this time around that's different is it the injuries because they are still dealing with some the injuries uh, hurt even even take curry's injury off table wigs has missed seven straight games i don't believe let's double check i don't think he played tonight either which would make it eight straight i believe that's he's correct. a huge piece huge huge piece absolutely he did not play again i it's i think it comes down to obviously we saw the stuff happen in the sprint and before the season, the role players are just not as good. They don't fit as well. Guys like Kaminga, Steven Gento didn't play tonight. Yeah, uh, Wiseman, yeah. they've got nothing out of the number. Was he the number? I think he was the number two pick. Those guys that left, they are missing. They're missing yeah. big time because as Draymond's starting to show his age, Clay's struggled this year. Jordan Poole's been up and down. Moses Moody's been all over the place for him. I'm worried, and they're absolutely horrific when they don't play at home. They lost Pull on the road again. again. They lost on the road again tonight. That Fixed puts it. them three, three and, and fifteen. 15. Mm-hmm. Like, and they go two more road games here before they have eight. They go to the Knicks and then to Brooklyn. I expect them to lose both of them. Be sitting at fifteen, nineteen, and then they have eight straight road or home games. I don't know. I. I I'm worried. I'm I'm very worried for them. Well, you mentioned though eight straight home games, and because of that, I have to pull this up again. Because for how historically bad they've been on the road, they're as good they're at home. <laughs> Twelve and two at home. There's something going on. It's down there in San Fran. They're pumping extra noise in or something. I don't I don't know what's home, going on. It's such. It's one of the biggest discrepancies you'll ever see it's it's is it it's odd is it without reason that they'll win seven out of those eight I mean, you've uh, got to consider it right maybe only six but the only what? they haven't played without curry yet in this current at home since he got hurt so you got how long that. is curry's absence expected to be that is unfortunate i don't have that in front of me it's a few weeks okay. i think i ex- i would expect a month i think it's three to four weeks with that sublax shoulder which Told you, called that one. Also, swish. By yep, the way, yep. yep. Check nice the archives, assist there. guys. Yes, nice this there. I don't, man. He's out. He's been out roughly a week. You're talking three more weeks. You're talking mid January. Be towards the back end of that eight game stretch, home stretch. I don't know, man. Hmm. I don't. I don't. It might be too little, too late at that point. I right. think it. Are we talking when I, play in at best? Yeah, and thank you for that because that was my clarification I was just about to make. When I say too little, too late, I don't necessarily mean they won't make the play in, but how? I, but then I guess I don't know. The play in stuff, anything so can fluky happen too. You know, it's a, it's not a seven game. Those playing games are fluky. They get hot, you can win. Don't you lose? Like it's not seven games. It doesn't tend to even itself out. It's more like March Madness. It's mm-hmm. one and done, survive and advance type stuff. And they're not a team that mm-hmm. so they're far not. this year has been healthy. No. So I don't, I don't right now like they're getting wigs back. Getting yeah. wigs back would really help them. That, that would be a big help. Could could be a big game changer. Yeah. I don't know. I I think you mentioned it. Let's see what happens if Wiggins gets back. I will need to see them start to lose games at home in that eight. So this eight game stretch is going to be what answers this question for me. Yes, personally. correct. Yes, yes uh, because yes. It, if those wheels fall off, then at that point, there's there's no ground left to stand on. It's like okay, well, the one thing we had was we're ten games over five hundred at home. Yep. You lose that. Okay, maybe it's time to start. <laughs> You know, looking at what Brooklyn and Miami do with their injury reports, and maybe uh, mm-hmm. start selectively f- working your way back uh, up the lottery, up the draft board, so to speak, yeah. for next year, because you do have. That's the thing with this team, man. I know it hasn't worked with a lot of these guys, but the potential is there. Kuminga, Wiseman, Pool. Could you see them shipping any of those guys out? I, I specifically look at Wiseman, who. As a number two draft that can't even crack the rotation. He's been in the G League. Been in the G League, been, yeah. He was hurt, missed all last year. Could, 
do you, do you see any of those guys getting traded to try to bring something back? Problem is the tax, the, the, the payroll, the luxury tax for them is outrageous already. Yes, which they normally are willing to pay it, so which is worth considering. I think Wiseman, you bring up a good point. Wiseman's probably the best option there as far, because at a certain point, and I think this is what's hanging in the balance for this organization right now, they're torn between the past, the present, mm -hmm. and the future all in one go. Trying to play it all at once. Yes, and and essentially almost trying to hedge that bet um, mm -hmm. and, and try to split it and see if I can't win both these hands of blackjack. You know, can I... Can I keep myself a, a champion while I, I reload this next mm -hmm. round? We're just going to, you know, wow. get right up in there. I I don't know. I, I don't either. His Wiseman's numbers are bad. I'm trying to uh, – here's where my roadblock He's only, is. Wiseman's I, 21, though. He's only 21. Who is that team? That's going that wants to go after Wiseman. That isn't going to instead say, Hey, we're in the running for a 7 3 Frenchman that does mm -hmm. a lot more than James Wiseman does. Yeah. Going to average more than six points a game next year. Unfortunately, despite his potential and his talent, James Wiseman is very much a move where like you're settling for that in this yep. case. So I. And he's not good enough. He hasn't shown you enough to yeah, say that he's going to fill any gaps for yeah, him. Yeah, and to give anything big up for him too. Like, yeah, it's man. I feel like you're almost better, and this is where I, I go to. I think you're almost better trying to shop Draymond and Clay. Mm -hmm. And I know certain Ooh, Warriors man. fans really Ooh, won't want to hear yep. that second one. But again, I ask you, what does Clay Thompson do for you that Jordan Poole won't eventually be able to do for you if you just gave him yeah. those minutes? There this will be year, some this things. year specific. This year specifically, yes, exactly. That mm -hmm. you got you got to my point before I did. At some point, Clay, the value of Clay and Draymond will significantly fall. If for Draymond, it maybe has already. Yep. For Clay, it's fallen. I, I would. It's not would, there, but it's fallen. Yeah. I, I would. I would glad. That. I would happily debate with anyone who would like to say that a pre. You know, I'm. I'm going back two knees ago clay thompson like yeah it's unfortunate mm -hmm. but his value has gone down there's no way you could get for him now what you could have in 2020 oh, mm -hmm. um however i think there's no way you're gonna get for him in 2023 what you can get for him right now no i think i don't i, I you're not ever gonna see pete clay again he's still good but he is on the decline and it's straight down i, I think you bring up a good point there too it's you probably sell someone else though so much legacy he means mm -hmm. so much to the franchise. Can you can you get rid of a guy like that and make make it so he's not a lifer there uh, as a fan base? Can you one's... afford for him to be a lifer? He's I not going to be cheap. No, probably not. I mean, that the money is all over the place. They're paying so many guys. They're playing wigs. They're paying staff. They signed Jordan Poole. Draymond's getting money. Clay's getting money. It's got to change somewhere because that wreck. At some point, they're not going to be able to pay that that luxury tax. And if they don't compete this year, if they're a play-in team and out team. Then that money's definitely not worth it. You can't do it then. You don't want to be too late with these things. That's that's always. You'd rather been be my, a year yeah. early than a, than too late. Absolutely. Yep. You always you'd rather you'd rather be early than late. Now let us know in the comments below what side are you on? Would you roll with the youth movement? Would you stick with the old guard? Are you going to continue to try to hedge this bet and, and and walk on both sides? Let us know in the comments below, and we will continue to follow this wild world of the Warriors. But they're not the only superstar team, nor former NBA Finals team that has struggled in the champions, last Champions, champions. What is going on? With the Boston Celtics, who are losing to checks notes, the Orlando oh, Magic back to back games to some team in Orlando. That's not right. Someone Palo, uh, how they got paloed. Which also, by I the said way, champions. I thought you were going somewhere else, so I jumped oh, the sorry. gun on this. Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know, man. They've lost four of their last five. Um, and they got Robert Williams back last weekend. 
nothing crazy. 18, it looks like he's on a pitch count, 18 minutes, both games, nine points, five rebounds, and then six and five. They have those two games here, 23 and 93 from three, 24.7%. Not good. Lost them both. Lost back to back wow. games, back to back home games. They were playing at the garden. Back to back home games against it's not the garden. I said the <laughs> Orlando Magic. That's not good. Now, I have to take this moment as I do because I am that guy to just say that once again, folks, we here at the bounce told you that a Celtics regression was coming. Mm-hmm. And also that this is the perfect time for it. Okay. Don't jump ship. Don't, don't. You absolutely should be frustrated. The Celtics should not have lost either of these games. These are games championship teams cannot afford to lose. You got to handle your business. However, if you're going to lose these games, losing them before Christmas is the right time to do it. It should also be noted that Tatum did miss the second one for personal reasons. He wasn't hurt. He just, all it says is personal reasons. There's that to it, too. Uh, I'm not freaking out. Not on these guys. Not with Robert Williams coming back. No, that's another point because we also mentioned that when Robert came back, that there would, of course, as there always is. You know, like yes. we're not we're not rebuilding wheels here, folks. We're just you know these are there are facts, there are laws and rules of basketball like yep. any other team sport. You got to integrate a major key player into your rotation that hasn't been playing for a long time. Guess yeah. what? Friction, difficulty, struggles. Bad shooting percentages. Guys getting used to. I I usually when we run this play, I'm here. Now all of a sudden, Rob's here, and now the way the defense is yep. reacting to the way we run this is different. There's a whole whole ecosystem in play here when this happens, folks. Yeah. So none of this is irregular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll be fine. I'm not. It's weird they lost back to back home games to them. I'm, but I'm not worried about it. I mean, they held it. They held the Magic to 95 points in one of the games and lost. <laughs> Like it just is. the most un Boston Celtics, the most, the least 2022 Boston Celtics yes. loss of the year so far. Where it's you expect them to lose games 140 to 130 if they're going to lose, not 95 to 92. Yeah, not that. Not now, like I that. do one point of concern, James, that I will ask you. You mentioned that in the second game they didn't have Jason Tatum. Now that Mm -hmm. has got to be a big question for some of those out there. Are the Celtics in a situation where they will only go as far as Jason Tatum can take them? If he gets hurt, are are they just done? Is it, you know, close up shop, we'll see you next year? I think without Jason Tatum, you're talking second weekend or second second round in a team like the Nets can get him. Yeah, like I, without him, I don't. Without him, they're not going to win the title. Yeah, they've got good players. Jalen Brown's good. They've got other players. Without him, and his, he's thirty points a game. He's an NBA MVP caliber player this year. Without him, they're not winning the whole thing. They're not beating the Bucks. Absolutely yeah. not. Said so didn't sound like it was injury related. Just it says personal reason. That's all I can find. No, absolutely, and I, I that's good to point that out. I just want to be clear because I I think that's still that's the point that i was trying to make is that this team as good as it is it it is reliant on jason tatum without him being him the the celtics they they just aren't going to go yep they aren't going to go all the way so uh maybe just uh more weight for his mvp candidacy going forward but yeah Mm -hmm. i think the celtics are going to be just fine they're going to have another one of these streaks. Mark my words, it may come in late January, early February. We have not seen the yep. last great Celtics run of the regular season where everybody's going to be talking about them again. Uh, we may have not seen uh, – I won't be surprised if if we see another losing streak from the Celtics even after that. Like, Be ready to ride this roller coaster, folks. Yep. This is still mm-hmm. a young team that scores a lot and, and still has a lot to learn, and they've been through a lot over the last couple of years. Yep. So – I mean, they're just they're just doing a really good job. Yep. It's amazing what they're doing. And that's how high the bar is set for them. Is that we're freaking out after two losses, you know? 
That's yeah. the standard. The standard's up here. It's where it is. And and props to Orlando. You know, there's the future is so bright in Orlando with, oh, with yeah. Paolo and other players that might be coming. Uh, but we, we also had a battle of the number one seeds last mm -hmm. week, James. How, how did that all play out? Well, our prediction that the Pelicans were the best in the West is now gone because they're down to fourth. <laughs> They've lost four straight, I believe. Uh, the Stars came out, man. That one. Stars came out. Bucks win 128-119. Giannis had 42-10. and 10. Brooke Lopez at 30, Drew Holiday 18. Here's a weird one. Jonas Valentuanus had 37. He took hey. 24 shots. That makes no sense to me. McCollum, who we talk about, is forgotten a lot. CJ at 31. Zion had 18. That was Joe Inglis' season debut. Uh, Middleton didn't play that game. Brandon Ingram didn't play that game as well. That's now Brandon Ingram's 11th straight game he's missed. Monster game. Just the stars came out to play. Yeah. Pelicans now have four straight. They've lost four straight after winning seven straight, falling down to fourth. So big game. One team is who we thought they were, and the other team still got more to prove, it looks like. I will say I still think the Pelicans are who I think they are because arguably, and I am one who will argue this, They've been without their best player mm -hmm. for the last 11 games. I know we, we all love Zion, straight. okay? We love Zion. I love Zion as in a parasocial kind of weird way because I never met the guy. Yep. But I am even a bigger creep for Brandon Ingram because mm -hmm. the polish that, that – that, he's a 6'10", like, light version. He's Kobe light, okay? He's not Kobe Bryant, but he's he's got – similar move sets yep. and, and he's paul george's size i mean he's so okay just take that he's he's paul george all right brandon ingram is mm -hmm. very good and when the pelicans get a chance to play with him and add what they've done without him i just I, be ready for this team to have a, yep. another wave is my thought james what do you think am i crazy have i bought into mm -hmm. am i eating too much gumbo I don't, a, I don't think so, man. Ingram's so good. Like, they're I, say they fall into fourth, they're two games back from the Grizzlies. It's not like they're ten games back. You know, they're right there. I think I, I, I'm, I'm worried. I don't know what's going on with Brandon Ingram. I don't know. He's he's missed a lot of games, man. Eleven straights, a lot. But they get him back. I guess I, I'm with you. I think he's their best player. Yeah, they are dangerous, dangerous, dangerous team, and they're gonna be. They'll be fine. And I will say, I, while I am concerned as well, because I, I don't know why, I encourage teams, especially in a long season, to just let guys heal. We've talked mm – -hmm. I made my Grant Hill joke earlier. There have been plenty of guys. Look, we dip in. You guys know this that follow us. We both work on both sports. So let, let me just take a yep. minute. Talk about that little Colts helmet behind me over this shoulder yeah. and uh, tell you a little story about a man named Jonathan Taylor who has played in multiple weeks this week when he shouldn't have and his injury has gotten worse over time. Never, his ankle never healed. And now you're shutting him down for the year. So take the extra time, New Orleans, because you'd rather have Brandon in June than have mm -hmm. him now and lose him again when you really need yeah. him. So even if it comes at the cost of a few games, if it means you're a three seed instead of a two seed, so be it. So because you're still hosting. When the time comes, you're going to have that guy. And in my opinion, he is that guy. I forget that that Jonathan Taylor, that injury happened against the Tit against the Titans way back in, man, that was October. Yep. They just never, that's the problem with that. Things can you linger. Don't, don't let it heal all the way. Like he's now shutting down, bad season. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Missed you're right games. there. Yeah. Came back and missed time multiple times. Like I said, you mm -hmm. want to. You want a more relevant but older, you know, go back to Grant Hill, um, yep. where it's guys where it's just just let it take its let it take the time that it needs. You know, we criticize guys on the other end of this that take too yeah. much time for things like a quad injury or something that other yep. people might call questionable. But I am on the side of you know, you better be safe than sorry. Again, you you want this guy playing when it's most important and yep. <laughs> to all the casual fans out there, the season hasn't even begun yet. It doesn't begin for six more days and we will be here for you. We're previewing oh. the 
unofficial start of the NBA here. Correct. In Christmas. Just, just a little bit. So uh, while we work our way over there, let us know in the comments below what your favorite Christmas game is. Are you going to catch them all? I am going to annoy the entire yeah. Nevik clan by forcing them to watch all NBA games all Christmas Day. Get over it. You can watch the NFL games in the sunroom because, listen, yeah. I've got work to do. All right? It's Jesus' birthday, not mine. We've got work to do. No time to blow it up here on the bounce. But, James, there are a couple of teams we are looking at in the middle Ooh, of the man. Eastern Conference that may just man. want to say, hey, it's Victor time. Uh, I'm going to pull up a couple of things while we talk about this. First is our friendly efficiency chart. Yeah. Soon we will pull up some standings. But – who do you want to talk about first? I'm still in uh, spoiler mode. I don't even want to spoil it yet. So who, who do you think we should talk about There's first? There's two teams we've got. Where are they? Let's see. They're dead center. They're just to the left of our offensive efficiency. Yeah. Oh, man. They're, they're right on top on, of each other. They're on top of mm -hmm. each other. That's the problem. Folks, we are talking about the Bulls and the Raptors. Should they or should they not blow it up? Mm -hmm. now, Kev, some, this is tough yes I, it is. i lean one way with one and the other with the other start with the raptors former nba champions mm -hmm. don't have Kawhi no more still got a good team however good core i should teams off or not very good right now 16 and 15 tied for 10th lost six straight two of their last eight they've won their next nine are against playoff caliber teams Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr., both slumping. The question is, do they blow it up? They've still got the draft picks. Fred and Gary Trent both have player options for this seat this next season. They're not guaranteed after this year. Siakam just came back. Pascal, he's really good. OG is a defensive player of the year type guy. The question is, should they blow it up and rebuild around young Scotty Barnes, who hasn't taken the massive leap yet? What are your thoughts, Kev? I think this one's interesting, and I want to give credit where it's due. I believe that the instigator of this, or at least the most popular uh, tweet that I've seen, this came from Kevin O'Connor at The Ringer, yep. who mm -hmm. uh, had a nice, a wonderful little Wemby edit with the Raptors throwback jersey, the city mm -hmm. jersey on there. It's just so, so choice. I think it got us all started starting to think about who are some of these other candidates of teams who yep. maybe we wouldn't have considered candidates for him who now have a realistic argument. And especially with the whole French Canadian Toronto thing, there's yep. an additional pull for those folks there in Toronto, but thinking about it strictly from an X's and O's place. Like, listen, I'm not, uh, I'm not a marketing guy in between the lines here okay you know what i do for my day job has nothing to do with this but listen i'm not here to talk with you about nba marketing let's talk about x's and o's would it make sense for the raptors to blow it all up for victor now og is the linchpin here in my thought because i've i've heard it argued that he could get uh a very big a king's ransom so to speak and i, I don't mm -hmm. know i'm trying to think of the comparison uh the recent trade where people have said we think og can get a similar poll and and i just i i wonder what the raptors would get for og because you mentioned yeah, fred and gary they're not going to get a lot for guys on team options they're going to get something you're going to mm -hmm. get something for fred with the right team who needs Gary Trent, you're going to get something. They're yeah, those are playoff teams players, looking for yeah. plug-and-play guys. And you're right. They've got those player options, so there's no guarantee on them. And the OG, thing about playoff OG. teams, you're not getting a lot to build. What are you going to get, a 17th overall pick? In Correct. The first? Yeah, like, even you if you get a first-rounder, yeah. what are you getting? Not getting young talent. You're not getting yeah. picks. I don't – it's where I lean with the Raptors to keep it, to not blow it up. They're I mean, 13 and 18. They are – they're in the play-in game right now. They're there. They've been hurt. Seattle's oh. missed games. They've missed a lot. Like I, with the Raptors, I lean towards ride it. Like don't blow it up. And it was Donovan Mitchell. Sorry to go back to the uh, comparison that I was forgetting earlier. Yeah, there's no. There way. have been people saying that 
they think exa- thank you they people are saying they I think that oh I'm cool the stats. there's no way you're going to get a Donovan Mitchell Hall for OG Anobi and listen he's a Hoosier all right if there was yeah. anyone who wanted to push that agenda to help my man like I, it would be me but I'm not listen I have some journalistic integrity here all right yeah like like, I, like he's good he's averaging 18.7 a game that's not even close to what Donovan Mitchell was averaging He's got no, career highs. I, I want you now. I, I want to go pull this I, You know, yeah, listen, I test. Yeah, I test it, and then just tell them. I, I don't. I don't even necessarily feel like we'd have to spend ten minutes going into OG versus, and it's it's not meant to be a knock by any means. They're they're different players, absolutely. But yeah, OG is gonna do a lot for you defensively, but offensively, he's not a dynamic game changer in the way that Donovan Mitchell is. At least no. not yet. And not yet. Not yet. I personally even like OG's averaging eighteen point seven points per game last year. Donovan Mitchell was averaging twenty five point nine. He's averaging twenty nine this year. Like different, it's just different. Completely. Donovan Mitchell is arguably. I mean, I I I don't even know that it's arguably. I would say he's in probably every major publication's top fifty players. Uh, probably arguably in most top twenty, top twenty fives. Yes. Where's OG there? Maybe top fifty. Uh, Maybe, not, maybe. not, yeah, exactly. Maybe top 50, top 75, he's, top 100. He's not in Donovan's not. ballpark. And again, that's not a knock. We're no. talking about a top 20 player in the league, but that's my sort of hesitancy. That's why I kind of yep. side with you on this, James. Also, it wasn't that long ago, maybe six or seven episodes where we were talking about how well the, Ra- the Raptors have been more injured than this and they were able mm-hmm. to to figure it out. So right now it seems they're they're slumping. But it's not over. It's it's they're, not quite over. Not, yet. It's not great, trust me, but like, they just lost to the 76ers by three. Like they're not getting killed. But I, I, I think this is a team I just ride I, I riding it out with these guys. Yeah, we talked earlier about Rob Palinka having some conversations with LeBron maybe in order to make some decisions. I think it would be wise to talk to Gary Trent and Fred Van Vliet and see how they feel about this team. Yeah, feel, see, yeah feel them out. Well, how likely are they to sign those player options? Because I, I, I think that's, that is, you know, to step away from the X's and O's and talk about the business side for a second. If you know or have a good feeling that one or both of these guys don't like your team's chances to make the playoffs this year and don't have faith in the long run, then maybe that makes a decision for you Mm -hmm. because there, there is a way where maybe without getting rid of OG, you can still ship off a lot more parts and still kind of strip yourself relatively bare in an effort to say, okay, we're going to, we're going to, hopefully have a big lottery pick and then we're going to make some plays and free agency and you know this roster that's going to be pretty bare bones at the end of the season uh we'll be able to fatten it up with relative ease so i don't know i I tend to lean with you as far as let's ride it out right now Mm -hmm. but even if i did blow it up i would look for ways to to keep my my three main guys being scotty og and pascal if you have to blow it up and those three can't stay, I don't know if it's worth doing because, again, yeah, this is a lottery. I mean, it's not like you get to trade this chip in and say, if I, like I trade that. you all the way, I get Victor. That's not how this work works. Way, yeah. So it's, it's all about risk versus reward, and I don't know if those scales are uh, in, in Toronto's favor. Now, I agree. there's a team that before they beat Miami tonight as a recording on a Tuesday that I would yeah. have said – might have been able to tank without blowing it up, but I may be wrong once again. So what about the Chicago Bulls? They're another team that's supposed to be a lot better mm-hmm. than they are right now. Is it They've, time, as I tweeted, it was, is it time for them to start looking around? I think they're the bigger problem. I, I think they've got to do some soul searching and probably have to look into this because they're stuck in a no man's land of not being good enough. However, they also know their draft pick. They traded it. So they are in a weird spot with no way forward. They had lost four straight four tonight. 
their draft pick goes to the Magic unless it's top four. It's a top four protected pick. So if they don't go top four, it goes to the Magic. Lonzo Ball has missed the whole season. There's no end in sight. He's had all kinds of problems with that knee. They haven't been able to replace him. Zach Levine right. hasn't looked the same since his knee surgery. He can't play defense at all. No. He can't guard me. Jesus. And he can't get to the rim like he used to. He's not as explosive. I think they got to blow it up. And they've got ex- they've got attractive pieces for teams. Again, here's the problem is they've got attractive pieces for teams that are trying to make a stretch run, trying to win. They can get some picks. They ain't going to get them next year, but in future years, DeRozan's an aging veteran. That could be the missing piece for a team. Yep. He's he's averaging 25 plus a game. He is a big piece. Nikola or Nikola Vucevic is in the final year of his deal. You got an expiring guy there. What a bad trade that yeah. was in yeah, hindsight. That's cost, what a cost, waste. Costing. Costing. What a waste. Great, great trade on both them. sides. Magic, right? The magic fleeced yep. him out of the pick. Uh, they've got defense, the old defensive wizard Alex Caruso. You know, got Goran Dragic, another aging vet. I think they have to look towards the future and just realistically understand, like, build around Levine. Uh, is it Trent Williams? Which one? They have a Williams. Um, I believe so. That. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not Trent. We're no, just, just no, no, Gary Trent. Trent. Um, Trent. Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. Build around him. Try to see if they've got anything there. Agent and I would assume was on that team. Like they, I think they have to look, do some serious thinking here, especially with Lonzo. Lonzo's no end in sight for his return. Yeah, which is which is really concerning. It, it I, I think it is time with the Bulls. Did you see how badly their attempt at a two-three zone went? Mm-mm. No, I didn't. Oh, um, check for it on on Twitter. I wish I had had the time to grab that for all of you to show. Awful, awful. I, well, so as you would know, James, one of the things you don't want to give up is in a two three zone is a layup. So, yeah, they they gave up a very easy inbound pass to the short corner that turned into a one dribble layup. Oh, so that you dance. know you have that I'm... two three. There's a middle guy in that three of that Can't zone that's that. supposed to protect the rim. And yeah, so yeah, it's bad. It's it's really bad in Chicago when it when it's that kind of defense. Just awful. I'm not sure what to do with it, but like you said, they have they have a lot of assets. Now, the thing with Chicago, it's not an easy road like you said. They would have to really they need to ship off a, all of these uh secondary pieces, all of these guys that could be the Drogiches, mm-hmm. you know, all these the the Carusos, all these guys that have uh, even a small value to other teams. And then they're going to have to make second trades. I feel like like you said, a lot of these teams that are going to be interested in making deals with them are going to have future assets that they, they being the Bulls, may have to repackage in an attempt to, to move up uh, in this year's draft. Or uh, they could just go all chips out and and really try to uh, get themselves down into that bottom four. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it's, top, it's, it's four protected. Uh, yep, it is protected. That's the big thing. But they're, they got to go all in on that protection if they want it, you know? Yeah, and it's again. You know, I I merely have to ask Bulls fans and hypothetically the front office, what do you stand to win this year in a best case scenario? If everything works out to the best possible outcome, what is that for you? Because I don't even think it's an Eastern Conference Finals berth. So what are you playing is it, for? Is it the second round? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Even with Lin Lonzo back, I still I don't see that ceiling. I know where the I know where the NBA Central Division, but listen, we had Michael Jordan, we have Giannis now. We can aim mm-hmm. bigger. We don't have to just settle for oh yay, we Midwesterners, we made it to the playoffs. No, you can blow it up, blow mm-hmm. it up. I think they're gonna reload. Blow it up. There's nothing for you here. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, James. They should have done this a couple years ago. There has been yeah. nothing here. They have been. Yeah, they they shouldn't have tripled, double, tripled down on this. Yep, it's, I agree. It, I, I agree with that. It's unfortunate, but hey, you know, what do we know, Kev? What do I know? We're Bulls just a couple fans. guys. I'm just a guy rooting for a wannabe all star. Now, we've talked yeah. about the New York Knicks today. Mm-hmm. We've had a lot of good things to say about them. Um, 
and a lot of good things to say about two of their good players. Now, in a recent victory over my beloved Indiana Pacers, a 109-106 hard-fought victory by the New York Knicks, one Walter Zerbiak of uh, former Miami Red Hawk and more renowned Minnesota, Minnesota Timberwolf, Timberwolf fame. Yes, a 2001 All-Star in his own right, now a analyst for the New York Knicks, called Tyrese Halliburton on multiple occasions, I will add, a supposed wannabe fake all-star in a soundbite that while we don't have it here i i will it's say was a bit aggressive over to say the least. yeah james so before i dive in because again of course as my background my background betrays mm -hmm. i have a dog in this fight so to save the bounce and, and to yep, keep our, me, jour let me keep our the journalistic integrity, yep. let me hand the reins off to you, sir. James, what do you think about I this? So I didn't watch this video until about an hour ago. I missed it. I knew about it. I hadn't watched it. I, I won't, like you, like we talked about, a lot of fans attacked Wally for his one, he would know one all-star game. Da, da, da. I, I don't care about that. What I care about is he comes off almost derogatory and attacking him and the way he says it is so odd to me. Like he's acting like Tyrese Halliburton isn't having a stellar year, isn't having a borderline all-star year. Yeah. It's so, I, I don't like it and approve of it. I just, it came off very, very disrespectful to me. This it's the is the best way I can put it. It's the best uh, way, right? Here's a guy that Kendrick Perkins, not me. Okay. Kendrick Perkins had as an MVP candidate two weeks ago yeah. mm -hmm. on the show. We talked about it and you can disagree with that all you want. I did at the yeah, time, but I, he was there, but he was there. You cannot sit here and say that that same guy is laughable when it comes mm -hmm. to their consideration for the officer. And that was where right. I took offense. And I wrote an entire article about it. Yeah. Simply pointing out I that just, all you, you, you can't, say that Julius Randle or Jalen Brunson is a shoe in for the all-star game. And then with that same mm -hmm. tone, say that Tyrese Halliburton has no business being in yep. the conversation because only one of the three so players that I mentioned odd. is averaging a double, double right now, only one. And it's Tyrese Halliburton. Yep. So uh, again, so, so shooting odd. a better percentage it's than so Brunson. Odd. And it, it, it's, what I will say is at the very least, what it has done is revived the Knicks Pacers rivalry. Cause James, here's the thing I didn't tell you about that. We also don't have footage of, but it has been collected. The screenshots have been grabbed, but the man himself, Tyrese Halliburton liked the viral video of Wally oh. Zerbiak calling him out. So the bulletin board material has already been collected, and the Pacers mm -hmm. themselves used it to go ahead and tweet, oh, by the way, all-star voting starts tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think Wally has sealed his own fate here. Yeah, and he I, dug his own grave. I think we will absolutely be seeing Halliburton in the all-star game because of this. Now, as a James, fan voting. <laughs> what do you think? Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. I don't know if he'll make it, but there's going to be a push from fans to get him in now because of that. Absolutely. Best, best thing that could have happened mm -hmm. uh, to Tyree. So before we go into our weekend preview, now we have a, uh, a bit of a longer clip here that will uh, require some audio. So you won't hear us for about a minute. Right? For a second. Yeah. Where we're going to uh, review what happened in the Grizzlies Thunder game? Yes, we have some unique perspectives to add here. Cause so we both have experience uh being members of coaching staffs up to mm -hmm. different varieties. Then I also am a certified uh official. Now I've yep. never officiated at the NBA level, but I've officiated at the high school, collegiate level, club level, intramural level. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to talk about this. We're going to give you our perspective on it. So without further ado, James, let's dive into Ja Morant's ejection. Well done a great job as well. The three ball has been very solid. You got 16 assists on 20 made field goals. Wow, did Ja Morant just get ejected? Ray Acosta came over, and he's going to send to the locker room. And Steven Adams coming over and immediately trying to get an explanation. There's Taylor Jenkins. He is irate. And so what happened here? What caused John Morant to get his second technical in about a minute and a half? And another technical has just been called. And I will stop it there. So hopefully we don't deal with any copyright issues. And is the head coach is my favorite. What the? twice and you get a fake you can hear it you can audio. hear it yeah. yeah and it should be noted uh right after i jumped out of that club dylan brooks also was assessed a technical yes. foul for the situation so we mm -hmm. need to add a little more context before we give our analysis and there was an additional video a second video that showed ja morant uh through his father's phone on facetime mm -hmm communicating with those same fans and essentially giving them the message of, Hey, you know, all good, not your fault uh, sort of deal. So it has been alleged and I don't, I can't confirm this. And, and I, I think the, to its core, whether or not this part of the allegation is true, isn't super relevant, but we're going to cover it and talk about the whole thing. But mm -hmm. it has been alleged that essentially those where people, whether or not John Morant knew them, the coach clearly says he's talking to his friends. Yeah. So it was clear that there there was thought that he knew these folks already. At the very least, uh, his father was comfortable enough to bring the phone, and they, they continued to have a conversation mm -hmm. afterwards. So what I was told was that the fans had said something along the lines of, Ja, you need to get it going. We're down 20. And that his response was, as soon as these refs give me a call, we'll get it going. Yeah. And that that comment was what drew the ejection. Now, I will stop there and just uh, let you step in, James, with some comment on this situation. You can't eject a guy like John Morant over a comment like that. You can't. I get it. Your ego kicks in. <sighs> no. Absolutely not. This should not be allowed. It's he didn't derogatorily say anything to the refs. He wasn't. What was their official statement? He was questioning their integrity or something stupid like that. Like, guess what? You're human. Your guess integrity what can be questioned. Yeah, you cannot cannot eject your young one of your brightest young stars ever like that like he's got to earn that kick out and that one is just frustrating and it's not no apps can't happen i tell you what i'm gonna go the opposite way james i would like to imply this into my day job and into all other uh professional activities that i have to deal with so from now on anytime anyone questions my integrity i would like to just be able to remove them from the situation so the <laughs> next not, time out, the next time my client questions me and says hey you said something was going to happen on this day and it happened the day later i'm going to say you're you're out you're fired yep. get out see ya. uh I, we don't want your money anymore no yeah it, it's ridiculous even if they were for First of all, you're not above question. No. That that in itself is a bit scary, right? To think that you are above uh, yeah. no, that. Man. Oh, you're questioning our integrity. You're gone. Yeah. So, no, uh, as an official, former official, I can say, yeah, absolutely. Things can happen. You can get hot under the collar. Players, especially those that want to argue every call, can get very, very annoying. And you as uh, someone who's being paid to be there to honor the rules of the game, have to work hard to make sure mm -hmm. that you don't get small between the ears and penalize someone and, and, and abuse your authority and your power because that's not your job. Mm -hmm. No matter how important you are to the game, because officials are very important to the game, no one is coming to see us, okay? No one's coming to see you, officials. And you made a very good point, James. And although there's to some level it should be no one should be treated this way, I do want to point that out. No one should be treated this way. No. But this is 
the one of the few players who is without a doubt the future of the NBA. This is essentially, you know, for all intents and purposes, you're treating the next Tom Brady like this for your sport. You yeah. know, like you're, you're and I get mad at me all you want about the comparison. I don't care. Leave it in a can't, comment. Can't do it. Can't I said what I said. You can't do it. It was a dumb move. They deserve even more uh flack. Well, they're gonna they're gonna get it. You know, it's the Streisand effect now. You see you didn't, you, refs are you happy with all the extra attention yeah. you've gotten now it could have been between one player and three folks in the front row and instead everyone's talking about it and now yeah. everything you do will be under a microscope mm -hmm. so maybe learn next time just learn to take a little criticism it's okay everyone has to take yeah, it exactly it's not the end of the world now james what is what we are approaching the end of i should say is is this year and and not only are we approaching the end of the calendar 2022 year, but we are approaching the end of the unofficial or official start of the NBA season. Mm -hmm. Christmas is this weekend. So we've got a big slate of games. Let's not leave Friday out. Our usual Friday will start. We've got to get there. What do you got? Anything on the slate? We've got mm. Saturday. Everybody's got Saturday off, so they fed us with a big, yep. hefty Friday before a nice Sunday. What sticks out to you on the slate? See your Pacers heat there, 8 o'clock. That's kind of fun. 7 o'clock, Clippers 76ers is the first one, earliest one. L.A. traveling to 76ers. See if yeah. Clippers can keep their winning ways going. Pretty good there. I like Minnesota Boston at 7 30. Yeah, I was We've looking at that one next. Yep. Two teams that both really need a win right now. I think Boston's going to straighten things out at home. Milwaukee yep. Brooklyn is the big most game, interesting big one, game. Yep. in my opinion. Um, you got a favorite there, Milwaukee Brooklyn? I like the Bucks. Yeah. I like until, until Brooklyn proves it, I like the Bucks. I'm going to go with. Brooklyn in a bit of a revenge game here. I think they'll have something okay. to prove. Uh, and I I think at home they're gonna do it. Another ne the next one. I mean, that same hour, 7 30 is the time to be paying attention. That 7 30, 8 o'clock hour. Because we also have Toronto at Cleveland. Yep. We were just talking about Toronto. Mm -hmm. I think that's another game that helps show them who they are. Chicago at New York. Yep. We just, just said talked about them too. Just said Chicago should blow it up, and they beat Miami by double digits tonight. Yep. So what are they doing? Will they be the ones to slow down the Knicks? I don't think so. What do you think, James? No, I don't think so. I don't think they've got it. I don't think they have the firepower to do it. I think the Knicks keep chugging along there, especially at home in Madison Square Garden. I like them a lot. Of course, I am picking the Pacers to beat the Heat at mm -hmm. 8 o'clock, sticking it to Victor Oladipo. Man, there's a lot of games. games. Uh, I like them too. I like that. I like them getting the job done there. The Heat are all over the place. You know, they lost bad, or they lost tonight to the Bulls. I like the Pacers in that one. I think then maybe we jump to the nine and yeah. ten o'clock. We got Portland back at back Denver and, and then games. Memphis yep. at Phoenix. What do you like yep. in those? I like, man, I, I like the Nugs against the Trailblazers. Nuggets are really good. Man, Nikola Jokic is playing so good right now. Two very good teams. Both teams playing very well. But, yeah, give me the Nuggets in this one. Although, hey, as we pointed out, Shaden Sharp, look out, human highlight yeah. reel. The Blazers are coming on strong. Currently, the you've got the one-versus-two matchup going on right now. It's Tuesday night here. The Nuggets, Grizzlies, Nuggets are up 12 right now on them. So that's a fun matchup happening right now. And a um, nice little, uh, yeah. Lead in. And then you got the Grizzlies, Suns. Who I like – I'm going to go with the Grizzlies. I like the Grizzlies on the road there. I'm going to go with the Suns because uh, they, they're they too hot. You know, we we said they would yep. do well. We said they would be bad. Now they're doing well, so I'm going to pick them to win uh, because the curse that we need to balance out the bounce curse here. Yep. So mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Suns, but I'm picking you to win yep. in that one. Now, here off, it is the most. Off Saturday, on to Christmas Sunday. Wonderful time of the year. Every game on national TV. Absolutely. And because of that, we've got a nice little focus on each one. Forgive the ads. I pulled this from the worldwide leader. So uh, they're not our ads. Feel no obligation to uh, patronize any of those companies. But what do you think here? Sixers at 
New York for the noon game. Looks like it's about a 50-50 split here between the experts. James, what are your thoughts on this one? I like I like the 76ers in this game. I am a huge in this one. I think the 76ers over the Knicks. I think this, I think that's where you're gonna see the Knicks uh winning streak come to an end. I think that's that's where it ends, is right there. Okay. What do, what do you think, Kev? I I have been hesitant to get back on this Sixers train. I will say it's notable. Joel Embiid leading in all major categories for the Sixers. I have been one who has, what I say, tooted the Joel Embiid for MVP horn many a time. I would love to see this continue. Let's get a couple more rebounds, Joel, so you can have that double-double average, though. Imagine that, a 33-point a game double double average that's pretty beastly give me the sixers because i this is more of a, a want than a belief james this team it's too they're too good to be this bad they they're too good to not make a run i i i cannot fathom never seeing james harden in well okay i can't say never seeing james harden in a final we've seen it but you know what I'm saying. I mm -hmm. I, I got to see this team be a legit contender. And for that reason, I am going to say the Sixers will make a statement on Christmas Day as much as I, you can tell I don't believe it, but I'm going to nope, say you it. I, 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 you fooled me too many times. I feel like, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'm going back, going back to a, a bad lover here and saying, oh, this time they've changed. <laughs> But no, no, they probably haven't. What is next? Lakers after Mavericks. Lakers Mavericks. Okay, let's pull that one up now. This one, uh, yeah, the crowd is not necessarily split on. As you can tell, mm -hmm. the Lakers' uh, best player is missing. Yeah, now, once one again, two best players is playing. And oh, yeah, yeah, Doncic. Doncic leading all Mavericks in all categories. So, again, yeah. while we're doing our MVP watch while we're here. So, James, this is a pretty easy one. I'm going Dallas. Yeah, what about it's Dallas? You? Dallas. We don't have to talk about that one too much. Unfortunate that this sadly, game is on yeah. Christmas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it wouldn't it have looked been. Much, but... looked much better on paper a few weeks ago. Now, this is one that is held up. Although – Mega game. I, I, can I tell you that I am shocked at that matchup predictor? Why, huh. oh, why is everyone so high on Boston for this one? I don't know. That's no interesting. One, no one given given Milwaukee the time of day. And they're the number, they got the best record in the NBA. I'm going to go with Milwaukee. That's going with Milwaukee. I'm wow. going to go with Milwaukee. They're playing really good right now. Uh. They've got dudes. Ingles be a second game. I don't know if Middleton's playing or not, but. I like Milwaukee. That's going to be – that is a fun, fun game. That is – let me see. I'm going to pull them all up. I think that's my choice for game of the day. If you can only watch one game on Christmas, I would say that's Milwaukee, it. Boston. That's got to mm -hmm. be the one. Yeah. But I am going to pick Boston in this one. If Chris Middleton plays, get back to me. You know, yeah. Reach out mm -hmm. to me on Twitter. Maybe I'll change my mind. But I like – I like Boston in this one because mm -hmm. again, this is another this is a marquee win that they need. They're they're in an ebb, you know. That maybe yep. time, maybe time to rise up. This just seems like the right time. And the Bucks with Ingles coming back, but not quite ready. And then Middleton, he's back. Yep. He's already back out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're getting them at a good time. It's going to be a nail, but it's going to be a close game. No matter what, the Bucks have proved they have earned that. They have earned the right for any of us and all of us to say with or without Chris Middleton, yeah. they can beat anyone in the NBA. So I can't sit here and say, oh, without Chris Middleton, they have no – no, bull. Uh, but give me the Celtics in a very close game. Yep. Yeah. Next is Memphis at Golden State. I think this can be another quick one, James. What do you yeah. think? Am I wrong lost, here? Lost its luster when old Stephon Curry's shoulder went out. I like the Grizzlies pretty easily there. I think Golden State's just a mess right now. Yeah, as long as the officials let Ja Morant play, not much right. to see here. The Grizzlies will handle business. Now, yep. you can maybe skip the 8 o'clock game then, but maybe if you have time or if you're on the West Coast, stay up and watch this. This one is fun. Woo, 
Suns oh, Denver. S- second best game of the day. This is a lot of fun, Kev. Ooh, that's a lot of fun. I am liking it almost as much as I am liking Nikola Jokic's triple double. He's one so point, good, one assist man. a game from pulling the old Russ Westbrook. Speaking Oscar of triple Roberts. doubles, he's got one tonight. He's got 11, 11, and 10 right now. Man, just doing it. Do you think that the recently rising Suns have enough to nope. beat Denver at home? Nope. I love Denver at home. I love them at home. I I'm a big. They're gonna move the ten and three at home if they win. They pull us off tonight. They're up thirteen with five and a half minutes left on the Grizzlies. That would put them ten and three at home. I like them at home. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that Aiton will have enough for Jokic, and I think that uh, they will be able to withstand. I mean, Devin Booker could score 58 again. That always could happen. Could happen, yeah. And But that's what the Suns would need to win this game if that doesn't Looks happen. Looks like the yeah. Nuggets are going to win tonight without Jamal Murray playing. Doesn't look like Jamal Murray. Michael Porter's not playing. Aaron Gordon's got 20. Is it? It's Bruce Brown, isn't it? Is it, a, is it Bruce Brown again? I was going to say, is he? 16. Jokic has got the triple-double. Kentucky, Kentucky is called Will as 12. C. Braun? Who is that? Soon, Bruce Brown's going to message Christian, me and say, hey, quit telling people I should have stayed in Brooklyn, man. I like it here. You Christian see how much better Braun things are for me here? 13. Bones Highland has 12. Yeah, they're doing it with a – they're winning tonight with a eclectic group of guys around the Joker. That's worth keeping an eye on, guys, because that can be dangerous if they can yep. start doing that. Because, look, Christian Brown, especially – that's a dude who played – a lot of meaningful minutes in college. That's a veteran college mm-hmm. guy who could play meaningful minutes for a team. He could become a key piece of their rotation. If they start to have some of these other guys, Bones Highland, the guys you're not expecting all elevate, and then Murray comes back and he's the Murray that I expect him to be. He's yep. 2020 bubble Murray. Then look out Denver. When it's all said and done, Heading into the playoffs, we might all be sitting here saying Denver is a team to beat. Mm-hmm. Don't don't be They're surprised. Good, good. We're not ready to do it yet, but if they get healthy, who look out? So yeah, good. marquee. I'm glad we have at least one of each, and they're both. It's yeah, there's some good two ones. of the best in the East, like the, the two best in the East, and potentially two of the best in the West. So. Yeah, right now it's one, two, East and West. The you could I guess, I guess one two would be, get one two's playing in the West right now. It'd be two three. Sorry. Can't draw it up hardly any better if you had asked Santa Claus himself. Mm-hmm. So uh, with that, James, I think that about covers it. I mean, we didn't we we didn't pull up our Wemby watch, so I'm going to pull it up right here. You can look at the standings. We did talk about some teams we'd like to see maybe uh, throw their hat into the ring. So I'm going to remove our banner here for a second so you can see Don't where everybody down there. Don't mind my team down there. At number one, Ooh. Detroit Pistons. They're hanging out right where they need to. I am in love with the future NBA champion, Detroit Pistons. I cannot <laughs> wait. My younger brother is a Pistons fan. I look oh, forward he's to celebrating. Be that. Yes. Yeah, he's going to have a good few years coming up. But yeah, there's looking bright down in Detroit. But you got anything, James, before we say farewell and wish all these uh, folks a Merry Christmas? Is there not, anything in the world of the NBA we missed? No, I think we hit everything we needed to. We're going to have a lot to talk about next week. We're pretty pre-recording this one on a Tuesday, so we'll have 10 days worth of stuff to talk about. I think the Joker is having – he's starting to heat up. He's looking great. He had a monster night this last week, 40, 27, and 10. Um, other than that, we hit it all, my friend. We, we did really well. I think I think everybody needs to pray for both of us. Both our NFL teams are just <laughs> falling off the map. And I'm, I'm, pre- I'm worried of a Tennessee implosion. I'm missing the playoffs is coming. You've already predicted it. Mm-hmm. So just uh, everybody should just be thinking about us in these holiday seasons. Pretty tough time out here, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, we, absolutely. Keep us in your thoughts and prayers, but know that our loss is your gain because it it's, just means more mm-hmm. in depth NBA coverage. Yep, from us here at the bounce. And while we're talking about the bounce and about stadium rant, now's a good time for me to mention that you can find. 
my writing and James speaking and my speaking over at StadiumRant.com. You can find both of our podcasts, the Indy Intercept mm-hmm. podcast, the Titans Tilt podcast on the Stadium Rant podcast feed. You can find that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. Of course, if you are not subscribed to us here at the YouTube channel, I don't know what your deal is, man, but you really, I, I, I can you help me out? Can you give us a like and a mm-hmm. sub? We thank you for that. But in all seriousness, we appreciate you being here with us. Before I send them home, James, where can they find you that I haven't already told them about? You can hit it all, man. You can find the Titans Tilt podcast at Stadium Rant. You can find us here every week, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, my friend. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you. You can find me at my Twitter handle. It is right here if you're listening. It is at Kevnevic underscore. You can also find me at Bite Size Sports, bringing you short sports content with a bite. And also, of course, always Stadium Rant. We are so happy to be here. We'll be here next Thursday and Mm -hmm. all the Thursdays. But Tuesdays, Necessary Roughness. We've got our main man, Trevor, doing the fantasy. What's the Rumbles of Red? Help me out. Rumbles of Red. He's got two of them. He's got the Rumbles of Red and another damn fantasy podcast. Another damn fantasy podcast. I can't keep up with him, but he's helping me get better at FanDuel. So we Mm -hmm. appreciate him for that. (laughs) All right, guys. Hey, if we don't see it, we won't. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. If we we will be here before the New Year's, but in case we will be back for that.